Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the correct views. It is New Year's. Yes, it is. 4.30 in the morning and you're getting a live New Year's Eve show. It's benevolence, isn't it? Actually, I had to work anyway, so I might as well just finish off the night. Guys, welcome to New Year's. Um, I'm going to get into all of the news regarding the uh, the police state, as mentioned in the title. Uh, I do want to address one more thing, and I would be remiss if I did not, so don't tune out on me, but I have to thank my loyal listeners. I have to thank those of you that subscribe, those of you that watch all the shows, and those of you that donate at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. I thank all of you very, very much, and I thank the Media Speaks for bringing me on as a member a couple of years ago. Um, I also want to dedicate the show to whoever the guest was on the uh, a comment line that my show was on, where he de- attempted to debase the show by saying, he didn't like the production. I tip my hat to you. He didn't like the production values of the show. So that somehow means that because I don't have a ton of money to do the show, that I must be an idiot. I've gone to school. I have a degree in IMT. I'm well aware of how to produce videos, but I don't have what I need to do it. Uh, Adobe Premiere and a few other things. But... The reason I mention it is it's good news. It's good news because they can't say anything about the facts that we give out every day here at this show. They can't say anything about what it is I'm saying. All they can do is say, oh, he's got tattoos and he's in a band, so we won't take him seriously. Or he's got long hair. Let me tell you something. There are sources for everything that is given in this show all the time. If something is my commentary, it's very obvious. So I want to thank all of you that helped us grow. This has been a rough year for everybody. I don't think anybody's happy to see 20, uh, sad to see 2014 go. Lost my mom this year. Lost my dad in 2012. Uh, Alex Jones was talking about his grandmother still being alive, and he's like my age. But anyway, thank you. That is my, uh, that's my New Year's introduction. It's pretty much a great big thank you. Keep trusting me, and I will keep giving you sources, even if guests insinuate that I don't. This, speaking of InfoWars, from InfoWars, Americans brace themselves for unconstitutional New Year's Eve checkpoints. And now you're thinking, well, I don't need to hear this story by Alan Salazar, so I'm just going to skip ahead to your show, Sam. You know, you want to read this. Because there are multiple states that are keeping their checkpoints open well past New Year's. You'll be listening to this New Year's Day, um, which is now about four and a half hours old, but it's going to be going on all the way through Sunday. And why are we, why are we against it? First of all, do you understand that the Fourth Amendment prohibits the government from doing these kinds of things? Do you know that the Supreme Court has ruled that it is illegal? But it is allowed because of the, uh, the threat of drunk driving. Do you know that most people who are arrested for DUIs were not drunk at all? You know what? I've got nothing to hide. If I, have, if I, if I don't have my credibility, then what do I have? I don't even have a show, right? I had a DUI. Uh, in Ohio, there was three-tier DUIs. You want to know what? Look at me. Okay, I'm not exactly the Goodyear blimp, but I'm not exactly uh, an emo kid in, uh, in uh, thin pants either. I'm a slightly larger than normal guy, okay? I had a last call shot where I work and got a DUI. I pulled out, uh, there was a light that used to be uh, no turn on, well, used to be able to turn on red, and then they had put a sign up since, which is now again gone. I think they do that on purpose. And they use that as a reason to trump it up and steal thousands of dollars. That's what all this is about. If someone hasn't gotten like a a level three DUI, there's a real good chance they were perfectly sober. But they have these lies that, for whatever reason, people fall for again and again and again. What kinds of lies? Lies such as, uh, well, do you know that uh, over 50% of accidents have to do have uh, involve alcohol? That's a lie. Okay, that's a lie. Why? Because the same accident would likely have happened if the person had had zero shots as if they had had two in a normal given night. That is how they manipulate it. That's like me saying to you, do you know that oxygen played a part in 100% of 
crashes last year, they found oxygen in all of their systems. So the point is, what, what, how, when do you draw the line in the sand? What works and what doesn't work? Well, we know that saturation patrols, that is police all over, do a much better job at catching DUIs than um, checkpoints do. But the reason I'm doing this is you can find places on here about where they're going to do it. Um, there are some, some states are doing them on Fridays. Um, it says here, Kentucky State Police will be utilizing directed patrols as well as safety checkpoints throughout the New Year's season. So I'm, I'm not going to read the whole article to you and go state by state. Go to the article. I've given you the heads up and look up your state. I do want to give a shout out to the governors of Alaska, Idaho, Iowa, Michigan, Minnesota, Montana, Oregon, Rhode Island, Texas, Washington, Wisconsin, and Wyoming, who have deemed them illegal. Um, what else do I have in our police state update? Why am I leading the new year with this? Because I think these are the things that we are going to want to keep an eye on first and foremost, because these are the things right now that are closest to home. City of Boise slaps Uber with cease and desist. For those of you that don't know, I didn't know until this summer. Um, Uber is a uh, independent taxi service. Basically, Boise is saying that Uber is not allowed to operate until they have jumped through all of the hoops, such as undergoing background checks for safety and operators. Vehicles operated under Uber drivers are properly inspected. Uber drivers and vehicles are properly insured. Their uh, customers have a clear way to provide complaints and feedback to the city of Boise. Listen, why do we allow them to over-regulate us like this? Can you tell me that? Can you tell me why we don't tell them to go to hell and stay the freak out of our business? Why don't we do that? Can you tell me? It's none of their business. I would say that Uber should have to say, Uber is an independent driving company. Our drivers have not undergone safety or background checks with the city. They have not la 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 everything I just read to you down the line. It's up to you. Some of you listening to this will be happy just to get a ride. I was a cab driver for a, a decade. So please don't try to tell me something about cab driving like I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, it's a whole nother story. If anybody wants to know, leave it in my comment line. I'll do a whole show on it. Yes, I have all the crazy stories that you think I would. Um, it's up to you, the listener, you, the, the, the person that needs the cab, the listener. Um, I would call an Uber cab. Maybe you, no, I don't want to be with this driver. Man, I don't know what this driver is like. I got my kids with me. He hasn't got a background check. Okay. Then call another company. That is the way America is supposed to work. It is not supposed to work where Boise can step in and say that if you don't jump through these hoops, we are not going to let you operate here. It's none of their business. It's the business of Uber and the people that get into the car. Well, what if he's a rapist? Well, I'm pretty sure we have laws against rape already. So if the Uber driver raped somebody, he didn't rape them because he was a cab driver. He was going to rape them anyway. I highly doubt the rapist taxi driver will just continue about his day without the background check of Boise. Um, guys, moving on to more news in our police state update. Um, now, keep in mind, filming cops has been, according to the Supreme Court, proven to be legal. Well, listen to this. It's now illegal in Illinois to film cops, or any government officials for that matter. Steve Watson wrote this. An amendment to the Senate bill in Illinois has been overwhelmingly passed to ensure that recording police officers and government officials is now a felony. The amendment to Senate Bill 1342 was stealthily introduced, it says, on the back of an unrelated piece of legislation last week. It essentially reestablishes a completely unconstitutional eavesdropping law that was previously overturned by the Supreme Court. There's a link for that. In March, for being too draconian. Uh, the amendment has stripped away safeguards to free speech from the original legislation and instituted a blanket ban on recording officials in public. It was passed by both the Illinois House and the Senate with huge majorities within two days of its introduction. 
Now, where one of the places that I work at, where I DJ uh, full time, my boss has cameras all over the club. One of those cameras, sometimes two of them, depending on how they're faced, face my DJ booth. He hired me. He can do whatever he wants to around filming me. He's filming his club. Okay. You listening to this are paying for the cops to be there. You, in essence, are their boss. And you can film cops whenever you please. It's your right. It you are that you can be filmed walking down the street if you don't want to be. You have no expectation of privacy in public. It says a post at watchdog website illinoispolicy.org and notes that the bill is designed to prevent people from documenting interactions with cops on their cell phones by making it a class three felony to eavesdrop on city and state officials, including police officers, police and attorney general, and assistant attorney general, and onward and onward. Judges, you get the point. But it says the new amendment is a lie. It legislates its way around the reasonable expectation of privacy standard in law by, refra- by refraining and defining it. Merely states that recording any oral communication, you're not eavesdropping. You didn't overhear something. If you are filming what the cop is saying to you, look up the definition of eavesdropping and you'll find that this isn't even what eavesdropping is. That's like saying it's illegal to steal when you're talking to someone that just shot someone. It's not, and it didn't steal anything. It's not even the definition of what thievery is. This isn't the definition of what eavesdropping is. So how do you get around this in Illinois? How do you prevent this? By every single interaction of any kind that you have with a police officer, by filming it and refusing to do so much as go to court. If every single person that got pulled over did that, they don't have enough jail space to arrest you all. You can fight back by mass disobedience, by forgetting whether or not the person you're fighting with is black or white. I know they want you to worry about that. They want the black people to hate me. They want me to hate black people. They want us to hate Asians, Indians. Oh, let's all fight each other. But if we didn't, if we didn't, If we got together, we could stop this. And the way that I just outlined, it's why I do these shows. It's why I'm here on New Year's Day. All right, friends, money.cnn.com. How the NSA can turn on your phone remotely. So let's get this straight. I love how the story is lined up today. Let's get this straight. It is illegal for you to film the authorities, but it is perfectly okay for them to film you using your own phone, perhaps, by turning it on without you uh, knowing it. That is perfectly legal. It's okay for the authorities to do it to us, but it is not okay for us to do it to them. And that's, that's in the Constitution where I, I must have missed it. It says, even if you power off your cell phone, the U.S. government can turn it back on. That's what ex-spy hero Edward Snowden revealed in last week's interview with NBC's Brian Williams. It sounds like sorcery. Can someone truly bring your phone back to life without touching it? No. But government spies can get your phone to play dead. It said it's a crafty hack. You press the button, the device buzzes, you see the power off animation. The screen goes black. But you'll see. But it's, it'll secretly stay on. It says the microphone listening and the camera recording. No, I'd be interested to know how the uh, camera light doesn't come on when it's recording. Um, anybody comment line? How did they get into your cell phone in the first place? Well, here's the explanation by former members of the CIA, Navy SEALs, and consultants of the U.S. military cyber warfare team. They've seen it firsthand. <clears throat> Government spies can set up their own miniature cell network tower. Your phone automatically connects to it. Now that tower's radio waves send a command to your phone's antenna, a baseband chip. That tells your phone to fake any shutdown and to stay on. A smart hack won't keep your phone running at 100% though. Spies could keep your phone on standby and just use the microphone or send pings announcing your location. So maybe that's, a, maybe these pings Pings can be hacked by another third party, and maybe you can get raped. Maybe you can get killed. It sounds a lot more dangerous to me than Uber. What do you think? 
Again, I'm not saying the government's going to spy on you and rape you, but if they're pinging your phone, anybody can pick up that ping. Anybody at all. It says, John Perk, who did cybersecurity research at the CIA, said that these methods and others, like physically bugging devices, let the U.S. hijack and reawaken terrorists' phones. It's always for terrorism. Isn't that amazing? <clears throat> It says the only way that you can tell that your phone feels warm when you've turned it off. That's how you know. That means the baseband processor is still running, said Perk. Now Chief Technology Officer of the NSS Lab Security Research Firm, Edward Snowden is a godsend. And again, it goes on to say here why Snowden did the right thing. I think it's pretty obvious that why uh, Snowden did the thing. But anyway, it says uh, it's kind of easy albeit cumbersome, for iPhones uh, to get around this. Plug it into a computer with iTunes open, hold down the power and home buttons for 10 seconds, no less, and then let go of the power button. Wait for an iTunes pop-up. That's it. <clears throat> um, I'm giving you ways to get around this here in case you wonder what I'm doing. For Android users, recovery mode varies by model. Android Magazine has a great tutorial that's linked on here. It says create a barrier, use a signal blocking phone case, and you can buy them at off pocket hide cell, and you can even make your own as a link to it, assuming you have the practice. Uh, pull out the battery. Without the power source, the phone can't come back on. Also, Silent Circle is a company that enables top end private communication. Keep these issues in mind when it's co created by the black phone. So there you go, friends. It's how they turn your phone on, and don't you love the correct views? We tell you how to get around it. Friends, you're listening to the correct views, and I want to thank you for doing so. I also want to thank Mike McLaughlin for being an amazing sponsor on this show. He is a writer, and I'm honored to have a writer on the show as a sponsor because, let's face it, our country, friends, is getting dumber and dumber and stupider and stupider. I know, more stupid. But you get the point. So go ahead, read a book. Do something to further your mind. Get a book for your idiot friend and maybe they'll read it. Where can you get a good book? <clears throat> From a good author. And uh, you will find a very good one in Mike McLaughlin on Facebook.com. Let him know that you heard about it from uh, from the correct views also if you would be so kind as to donate to the show and become a sponsor every penny you give to me goes about goes towards a better show I got lights on both sides of me <clears throat> got a third light on the ceiling computer hours of research time microphone uh, you name it it all costs a lot of money friends all right con and this is the uh, con contra costa times news uh they've never been on this show before but welcome aboard a Richmond officer found with marijuana in a home likely won't face charges, officials say. Now, many of you know I don't think that marijuana should be illegal in any way, shape, matter, or form. However, if it is, <clears throat> and you and I and everybody else that uh, would be found with any under the same circumstances would be facing some kind of red tape. <sighs> Listen to this. A Richmond police officer found with marijuana in his home earlier this year won't likely be charged with a crime, authority said, but his future on the police force is undetermined. Well, I don't think he should lose his job for it because that seems a bit much. I mean, you're not going to lose your job if you uh, have weed on you. So, I mean, I don't think that necessarily needs to be the case. I think he should have to get the same kind of punishment that they would bestow on us. No more, no less. Veteran canine officer Joe Avila has been on paid administrative leave since September, pending an internal investigation, officials in the Richmond Police Department said. The Contra Costa County District Attorney's Office has been investigating since the case came to its attention earlier this year, but it is not inclined to file charges, said Robin Lepetsky, the county's, the, the county's chief public defender. So... How does that happen? Wait, do you hear the way he did this? A search warrant affidavit obtained by this newspaper shows that Avila picked up a box containing about four to five pounds of marijuana from a UPS store on November 25th of 2013. Avila then radioed a dispatcher to say that he would file an incident report. He never did. According to the, research, according to the search warrant, uh, instead, in what several police sources have said is a violation of Richmond police policy, 
the marijuana ended up in his Oakley home instead of being placed in the department evidence locker. Oh, it just ended up there. Of course, if you and I had done it, we stole it and trafficking, that's what they'd give us. You have five pounds of weed in your house, they're going to hit you with trafficking. It says the matter came to the official's attention after an officer was assigned in January of 2014 to investigate Avila's alleged failure to write more than three dozen police reports. It says an investigation continued. Internal affairs investigators informed Avila that he would be placed on administrative leave for failing to file 37 reports. One of them, the report on the marijuana that he picked up at the UPS store. Again, I know there's way too many, and way too much red tape for cops. I'm not insensitive to all cops. I'm really not. But he needs to face the same kind of, uh, same kind of repercussions that you and I would get if we accidentally ended up with five pounds of weed that we picked up at the UPS. Uh, two more stories here to start the new year off with our police state show. Uh, Kurt Nemo, Prison Planet. Most Americans want independent prosecutors to handle killer cop cases. Um, many of you know I was not on Brown's side. I did feel that the uh, the gentleman, unfortunately, had he, he'd asked for it. Brown asked for it. He was stealing. He was uh, roughing up uh, convenience store people. He was attacking a cop. Uh, I, I think Garner should have been totally left alone in every way. In both instances, regardless, there would be no debate if they had been properly filmed from the cops. Uh, with Garner, again, you could argue that even if it was filmed, we all saw it happen, it could still be corrupt, obviously. But if you have people filming and cops filming and cops having to film everything, then a lot of these rape allegations and these uh, stealing allegations and things like that and uh, abuse of power accusations would vanish overnight. Who wouldn't be in favor of this? Well, an independent, pro uh, an independent prosecutor would be another way to analyze these videos properly and to see exactly what happened and vet the truth more quickly. It says, despite the social and political division over Michael Brown and Eric Garner cases, recent polls show that most Americans want to hold police accountable when they kill unarmed citizens. Amen! Again, we use tasers too much, but at least try. I mean, if the person is really, really violent, and they're not, like, reaching for your gun, or before they reach for their gun, you taser them and they die... I think most people would be willing to listen to both sides of the story on that kind of a case, but that's not usually what we're talking about here. It says when it comes to the cops, behavior of the cops, according to the Washington Post poll, Americans hold an almost unheard of amount of consensus, so at least we're unified on something for a change. They want independent prosecutors who are not public, politically linked to city government and police departments. What's a little more surprising, though, is the consensus on another issue related to the Ferguson and Eric Garner cases. Independent prosecutors, reports the Post. The poll shows about the same percentage, 87%, support having these outsiders handle cases in which unarmed American citizens are killed by police. In other words, none of this police uh, investigating themselves, but an independent prosecutor. Again, so that the law faces the same law that you and I do. Maybe you'll find some of these uh, dumb laws go away then. Maybe we'll be left with a, uh, a more free society. That brings us, friends, to the dumdy of the day. And, of course, uh, the dunce cap of the month is right around the corner. And I need your vote. Uh, look up uh, the year-end sh year show. I need your vote on what the dumbest story was of last year that I covered. And uh, when you do, if you win, you're going to get your favorite charity promoted and you're going to win a whole bunch of free music from Passing Time. Here's our dumb friends that's from Tech Dirt, Tim Cushing. Tennessee Town Passes Policy Banning Negative Comments About the Town's Government. Our police state show has a dumb of the day. The commissioners of a small Tennessee town have just voted to ban negative comments in the form of social media. This stupid move was prompted by criticism and lies being posted online, which supposedly hampered the town's government from performing its duties. Well, hell, I opened the show with uh, the accusation that I don't give sources when I do before every story. Maybe because he lied about me, 
he should lose his right to even speak on a comment line. What kind of insanity is this? South Pittsburgh City is a town of 3,000. This fact will limit the damage done by its city commissioner's new policy, which passed with four to one vote, but only because the town itself is tiny. The ban, however, is super broad. Um, it says this is via Ben Swan. Embrace yourself for always awesome auto plays. It, it applies to all city elected representatives, appointed board members, employees, volunteers, vendors, contractors, and anyone associated with the town in an official capacity. First thing you can do to fight this, they should have all the val volunteers say something crappy and negative and see if they want to uphold this law and lose all their volunteers or if they want to realize that the First Amendment does in fact exist for a reason. Now, it's obvious that this ban violates the First Amendment, right? First Amendment rights of everyone involved. It's obvious to the lone dissenting voter, Paul Don King, who should be praised. It's not so obvious to the rest of the commissioners, who have offered a variety of terrible defenses of the new policy. Commissioner Jeff Powers. It seems like every few meetings we're having to address something that's been on Facebook or created negative publicity, he said. This is just an industry standard nowadays. So, you know, God forbid you speak your mind on uh, Facebook. So what, you're better off speaking it on MySpace? Oh, Lord, have you ever heard of such slight inconvenience? Every few meetings sounds exhausting. If he thinks it's a drag dealing with negative comments periodically, just wait until he has to actively police social media for violators. That's a great quote. It says, one, you're a government, not an industry. So that makes this move censorship rather than some sort of half ass town TOS. It's called prior restraint, and it's something that the Supreme Court has recognized as a violation of your First Amendment rights. That would be your right to free speech for you Drake fans. You can't tell just how any group of people that they can't criticize the town or its employees slash other associates. That's not an industry standard. It's not even a government standard. Criticism is to be expected, not shut down. It says, Powers follows up that by attempting to clarify the situation, he only makes it more incomprehensible. This is why he gets the dumdy of the day. Powers said the, police, the policy doesn't forbid the use of social media, and it can be amended in the future. Oh, like, we break it now, but we'll fix it later. We'll take your rights away now, but we promise we'll give them back. The first thing everyone wants to say is, I can't post anything on Facebook, he said. Well, you can. Just not anything that sheds a negative light on any person, entity, board, or things of that nature. You can go ahead and post all that you want. So as long as you're posting pictures of puppies, you're fine. But if you post something against them that's negative, then you, you will lose your post. Or as they say in the Christmas Carol, you, you will uh, lose your situation. You'll be canned. Sounds like a North Korean policy to me. How about you? You may not speak badly against our dear leader. Oh, okay. You're not banning anyone employed by or doing business with the city from using social media, it says. You're just forbidding them from criticizing anyone employed by or doing business with the city. But you can post all you want, except... It says, uh, fixing it in the post with amendments isn't a great way to run the town's government. The idea is to produce good policies and statutes, not bad statutes that need to be amended or rolled back before they can mesh with the Constitution. City Attorney Bill Gouger going on this said the new policy is not intended to infringe on anyone's right to free speech. That's like me saying I'm going to stab you, but it's not intended to make you bleed. What this policy tries to do is reconcile that right with other rights, he said. It does not to some extent it does to some extent limit your ability to criticize or comment on an official capacity. I am completely lost as to how Googler, the author says, has managed to reconcile the policy he passed with the words that he's saying in defense of it. It is definitely intended to curtail free speech. Free speech is the opposite of this policy's wording. How is limiting your ability to criticize or comment not a limit of free speech? Because it's in an official capacity? Even if that limitation manages to pass constitutional muster and good luck, the limitation is effectively meaningless because the range of people that this policy covers is so broad. Volunteers, vendors, and contractors are still private citizens, even if they are doing business with the town. 
If you want to write individual agreements with each of these listed parties starting to do business with or employed by South Pittsburgh City means not criticizing South Pittsburgh City, then by all means do so. These parties can waive their rights, but it's still their choice. You can't take that away. That, again, is prior restraint, something that's exactly a limit on free speech. Speech. Finally, some words of wisdom from the mayor herself. Get this, and I'm spending a moment on this because it's truly stupid. Criticism is one thing, Mayor Jane Dodkin said. Out of out-and-out out lies and untruths, that's another thing. These kinds of things are things that will be directed. Well, we all know that man-made global warming is a lie, but they're allowed to keep pushing it, don't we, Cat? Hey, there's a civil process for dealing with lies and untruths. Try using that instead. Libel and defamation are not protected speech. That is a slander. And any of the four easily bruised members of the city commission should avail themselves with that remedy. In other words, you already have laws against slander. Like you can say, Sam, you're an idiot and all of your facts are wrong. But you can't say, Sam, uh, you killed a child. Uh, I could sue you for the latter. If you just say, hey, I hate you, you suck, you're the worst political commentator that I've ever heard. Perfectly legal. Please don't. <laughs> it says the number of people whose free speech rights have been constrained will likely be low is no excuse. It is still what it is. Censorship in the form of prior restraint. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangi is signing off, uh, wishing you a wonderful night and a wonderful, blessed new year. And may it be much better than any years you've had prior. Thank God that this show is on. I mean it all the way. You can laugh at me all I want for all you want for being a Christian. I agree with Alex Jones today. If it wasn't for 